on behalf of the Lord, the Fathers of Mercy, everyone, happy Easter to all of you. Despite the fact that uh, I'm pretty exhausted, everyone's pretty exhausted. We've been through salvation history in about an hour. We have to say, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Easter is the holiday where sometimes it's hard to spread the joy to others that don't maybe participate so much in the celebration of the Lord's Paschal mystery. So I've thought about maybe other ways to, I don't know, spread the joy. I know Brother Joseph likes to say, like, Bona Pascha or something like that, you know, Happy Pasch. What about Happy New Creation Day? Happy New Creation. Happy eighth day of the week. When I was at St. Helens, I noticed that some of the Hispanics would talk about going to Mass every eight days. Cada ocho días, vamos a la misa. It's like we're always remembering that Sunday is the new day that the Lord has created. The eighth day. I don't know. You think of yourselves, what's a good way to spread the Easter joy? I want to start with something that I said to Mr. C last night, uh, right before the Mass, and we were talking about the great celebration that we're in the midst of, and we talked about something like, you know, I'm nervous about the homily, you know, what am I going to say? And I said to him, you know, if the Lord hasn't already spoken to us seriously by the time the preacher gets to the pulpit at the vigil, something is wrong. If the Lord has not already said something to each and every one of you, having read all these readings about the history of our God's revelation for us and what he did for our salvation, then I'm sorry to tell you, you're probably going to be a little bit disappointed at what I have to say. Now, I'll do my best, of course. But I said to him, I've remembered very few homilies on Easter Vigil, but what I do remember are the readings, are the texts that we hear every single year. And every year, something is new. Like, I hadn't heard that before. I remember last year and this year as well, in the first reading, we had a young lady who was doing the reading at St. Helens last year as we were all in the middle of quarantine and all this. She did a great job. And I just remember she said the line where it says, and he made the stars. And he made the stars. Like, incredible thing that God has done in like four words. And he made the stars. And that stuck with me. Like, oh my gosh. Out of all the things that we can meditate on in these readings, all the things that we can meditate on what our Lord has done for us. So, please, today, tomorrow, throughout the 50 days of Easter, come back to the readings of this night and read over them, pray over them, and see how the Lord is speaking to you. I want to just focus on one part, this prayer that I offered a couple minutes ago. We have all the readings in this great feast. Then we sing the great Gloria and we have what's called the collect prayer. In most masses, the collect prayer that the priest prays after the Gloria gives us a kind of hint, not all the time, but many times, especially during the special seasons, the prayer gives us a hint as to what, let's say, the Lord's trying to say to us today. What's the theme, almost, of this particular Mass? And I want to read for you again um, this collect prayer from today. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant 
with the glory of the Lord's resurrection. Stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service. As I was preparing and I was reading this, this prayer, I was like, what, what, you stir up in your church a spirit of adoption. What does that mean? A spirit of adoption. It sounds very interesting. And I looked for different translations and all this kind of thing. And I found the old prayer the, the, from the old mass. And it's very similar. But it says, preserve in the new children of thy family the spirit of adoption which thou hast given, that renewed in body and mind they may render to thee a pure service. So very similar, except preserve in the new children of thy family the spirit of adoption which thou hast given. In other words, pointing right, to something that we don't always get to celebrate, well, hardly ever gets, probably never get to celebrate here in the Chapel of Divine Mercy uh, on this great Easter vigil. But those who are going to receive the sacraments of initiation, right, who are going to be baptized, receive confirmation, First Holy Communion, which we typically see at parishes. And to recognize that the Lord has chosen them to be his adopted children. The spirit of adoption. These people are no longer just a creature. They are a beloved son or daughter of God after their baptism. Now for us here, okay, I think it's very important for us to remember we're going to renew our baptismal promises. We're going to remember and reproclaim our faith. Right? As if to relive the moment where the Lord chose us. I always preach during baptisms. I try to always keep it short, you know, because the moms, they're, you know, they're trying to keep the kids still or whatever and the pictures and everything. So I try to keep it short. But I always try to make just one point. The gospel's typically the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan Right? And we hear that the heavens were open and the Spirit came down upon him. And we hear the Father's voice, this is my beloved son. And I say to the family of this child that just as the Lord heard that voice, this is my beloved son over Christ our Lord. So at the moment of baptism, the Lord is saying the same thing. He has been, he or she has been reborn. And this is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter. And then we are anointed. Anointed as other Christs. Many times, you all know this, you hear it a lot. All you have to do is turn on the TV. We're getting told what to do all the time. Right? Buy this, you'll be happy. Do this you'll be safe, avoid this, or else you're going to die, or whatever. I'm getting tired of being told what to do all the time. A great priest says it's not so much about what we do, right? And we don't have to hear so much all the time about what we have to do or what to do, but who we are, because we, we do flows from that. And if we're always focused on what we're supposed to do and we're anxious about what we're supposed to do all the time, like, we're going to forget that that needs to flow from our identity, right? Our identity as beloved sons and daughters of the Father. That is what we're celebrating here. All the readings speak to the people that God chose for that immense plan. And now through Christ through his death, through his resurrection, is the evidence and the proof that he does love us in this way, that he has chosen us for this mission to be other Christs in the world. We can't forget that. We can't forget that. We're all beloved sons and daughters. And in our consecration, in our religious consecration, our vows, we have to remember that it's all rooted in the consecration of our baptism. I wasn't sure if I was going to go on that rant, but there, there it went. 
So just to remember, Father Andy talked last night about remember, remember, remember. Yes, we have to remember what the Lord has done for us, how he has proven to us that he loves us, that he has chosen us, that he has a mission for us, that he has a plan for us, right? It's amazing how the light of Christ in the Paschal candle is almost like a symbol of his plan and his love for us, right? It's there when we're baptized on the first day. It's there. You know, some people have the, well, not most of us have a candle at our first communion, even maybe at confirmation to prove the light of Christ is with us, right? At every Easter vigil, it's there. And even when we die. Father Ben tells the joke about, you know, how some people, they come to church three times in their life, on the day of their baptism, on the day of their wedding, and on the day of their death. And two out of the three, they come having been carried to church. And sometimes maybe at marriage a little bit forced too. You know, we hope not. But, but how amazing is it that even when we die, say that person who only came to church three times in their life, the light of Christ was there at the beginning and at the end, as if to claim him and say, the light of Christ is still with you. The Lord is still with you, right? And hopefully by the rights, you know, the mass is offered for their soul, they will be with the Lord forever. I want to just conclude with a couple of things. You know, I have this, uh, I have a homiletics professor. She's about five foot tall, and she happens to have given me birth. And we talk back and forth about homilies and things like that. And she's always like, your homilies are too short, and this, that, and the other. And I've seen all these wonderful homilies on YouTube, and you should do this, and you should do that. And I'm like, okay, mom, I'm, tr I'm trying, okay, I'm trying. You know, I haven't figured this preaching thing out yet. And so earlier today I said, you know, what, you know, what should we talk about? What should I preach about tonight? And I thought what she said, it was a dart from the Holy Spirit working through mothers, which they tend to do. She said something like, you know, just tell a story and keep us entertained or something. And then end with this. Give us the good news that we are safe with Jesus Give us the good news that we are safe with Jesus. This is an amazing message for Easter because we cannot let fear paralyze us. Christ has won the victory. Christ has won the victory. Tomorrow morning, if you come to Mass, you'll hear a very beautiful text that Laura will sing. The first thing we hear as this Easter Sunday Mass starts, I am risen and I am with you. I am with you still. Hallelujah. I am risen and I am with you still. And in the gospel, we always hear the Lord come amongst his disciples, right? His disciples are, they don't know what's going on. They're scared. They don't know what's going on. And Jesus comes amongst them and says, peace be with you. He doesn't say, you know, why did you abandon me? Well, come on, Peter. What the heck happened, man? He says, peace be with you. Let us remember that, brothers and sisters, that the Lord is always with us. Let us, not, let, let us not let fear paralyze us or run our lives, but let us walk in the confidence that the light of Christ is with us. And finally, I just want to conclude with that. You know, at the end of, at the end of uh, Every traditional Latin Mass, the priest finishes the Mass by praying the beginning of the Gospel of St. John. And I believe the reason why he does that is kind of like it was at one time the thanksgiving of the priest after Mass, and then it kind of, you know, was kind of added on. But I think it's very appropriate that every time that the Mass is offered, Every time that we celebrate that Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, we go back and we give thanks to him by reading that first chapter where we hear these words. What came to be him, what came to be through him was life. And this life was the light of the human race. 
the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Christ our light will shine forever, my brothers and sisters. And then let us hear these words from St. Paul following from Ephesians. We heard this the other day at dinner and it was just beautiful. There was a time when you were there was a time when you were darkness, but now you are light in the world. Well then, live as children of light. <laughs>